Hollywood Hoop Dreams aren't only made from magic, they also come in the form of original podcasts from the Hoop Ball Network. So if you're the Lakers zooming out, are you tempted to bring back DeMarcus Cousins in the playoffs? And do you disrupt the dynamic at that point if he's healthy enough to play? Join Ethan, JC, and the thriving Lakers community around the world to talk about all things Lakers. The Lakers this season has come to expect of his team is consistent winning. That is something we have not been able to say since I've seen Andrew Bynum in a Lakers uniform. The show is available everywhere pod are found and you can follow the show on twitter at who call lakers the following is a hoop bowl presentation hello and welcome to the hoop ball dfs today podcast I am your host, Mike Patria, and I'll be flying solo uh, to break down this nice Sunday, September 6th card. Uh, right now, we recorded this the night before. It's uh, really early, trying to knock this one out. Um, got some got some things to do and some things behind the scenes that we're doing over here at Hoop Ball, but uh, I'm recording this about 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time on this wonderful Saturday night, but... Uh, I'm going to be probably flying through this slate relatively quickly. It generally happens when you're riding solo, but I'm still going to try to get just as in-depth and talk about all these guys that I've been looking at and uh, been doing well over the past few nights. So I don't know if uh, we've had any listeners that have seen the um, same success. Generally, I talk about the same players on the podcast that I'll be playing in my lineups. I try not to recommend anybody that I'm not. Uh, but before we jump into everything, just a quick shout out to our presenting sponsors over at Manscaped. If you haven't already checked them out, go over there, use that promo code HoopBall20, uh, get your significant other or yourself a nice gift. It is a premium men's grooming product, best in the business. Use that promo code HoopBall20, 20% off plus free shipping. And then I just also want to give a nice shout out to uh, our other good sponsor, the one that we're happy to be partnered with, and it's my bookie for all of your betting needs. Please check out my bookie. Head over there, use that promo code Hoopball H O O P B A L L, and you'll get a nice deposit match. Whether you want to bet baseball, basketball, football, this week coming up, only a few days away, uh, get your action over there at my bookie. And uh, you know why not check out my uh, hoopball gaming too if you want some free wins. Those guys have been crushing it uh, for probably, probably about, like the past month now. I feel like they've been winning me money, so check them out and take advantage of it. But. We'll jump right into things right now. First game of the night, Milwaukee versus Miami. We have a 220 game total with Miami now being favored by one point as they are up uh, 3-0. And as far as the injury report goes, we have Giannis being listed as questionable with that right ankle sprain. Uh, and then Kelly Olenek on the other side being listed as questionable with the right, right knee bruise. He missed that last one. Tyler Hero is being considered probable with this right hip bruise. So... Uh, we'll jump right into this. We'll start off with this Milwaukee team. We'll look at it in two different lights. A, uh, you know, I expect I expect you know Giannis to play. I mean, he's a gamer. This is a elimination game. They're down 3-0. It's not looking good for him, uh, but I fully expect and anticipate him to play. Now, does that mean I am playing him? Uh, that's a different story. Probably not. Um, there's some better guys I like at the price tag. He's been struggling through the series. He's dealing with the ankle sprain. There's a lot of reasons why I'm not. So GPPs, he's always in play. I mean, he can still, you know, see decent minutes. He's not playing that 38 or 39 like we hoped and expected. Uh, but we know what he can do in limited minutes. So, you know, I'll, I'll be under the weight on him, uh, underweight on him regardless. So no Giannis for me. Uh, you know, as far as Middleton at 8,100, small forward, only eligible. Uh, don't mind looking at him. He's just been, you know, steadily getting you right where you need to get that close to that five X, that thirty nine to forty four range. Um, no, no qualms playing him. And obviously, in nights that I am not looking towards Giannis as much, I tend to look towards like Middleton and Bledsoe and Lopez. Those guys a little bit more. Uh, and the same can be said for Bledsoe. I mean, the minutes aren't promised. He's, he's no by, by no means a great play, but at fifty six hundred with everybody else kind of being adjusted as these series go on, um, you know. It's still a good price for him. He's a decent price for him. you got to imagine these guys have to play decent minutes. They've been playing George Hill a ton. But I'm not going to completely X him out. I, I prefer, you know, just spending up on Middleton over Bledsoe. He's, but I'm not going to eliminate him, you know, just for my player pool just yet. And uh, the last guy, I guess, that we could really talk about is Brooke Lopez. And I'm going to continue to play him. He's just been crushing throughout the series. It's a great mismatch for him with the BAM. Primarily taking a lot of the honest work. So he's been shooting well. He's been aggressive. Uh, only three for nine in that last uh, in that last game from three pointer, but the fact that I took seventeen shot attempts is what I like to see. Uh, I rode him hot and he made me some money, so 
I'll continue to uh, to have some shares of Brook Lopez. Now, if Giannis is out, um, you know, obviously Middleton, Bledsoe, Lopez, all those guys get massive bumps in usage. Matt, those are guys that we can primarily look for. But who's the guy that we can take a look at for his minutes? Uh, it's mostly going to be Marvin Williams. So at 3,500, he's been playing steady allotment of minutes about that low 20s range regardless. If Giannis is out, we'll probably see him, you know, mid-30s, low 30s. So I definitely have some interest in him at 3,500 if he is ruled out. Uh, and then we probably, you know, see guys like Kyle Korver, Ilya Silva might get entered back into the rotation. Uh, both those guys would probably get a few a few extra minutes while, you know, DiVincenzo and George Hill probably see an extra one or two as well. But my main interest would be Marvin Williams. And then obviously with Giannis out, the usage just trickles down to everybody. Everybody gets a little bit of something. So that's pretty much what I'm looking at for the Bucks. So we'll slide over to Miami at this point. Uh, Jimmy Butler, 8,600. And playoff Jimmy's a wonderful thing. I mean, I've been a big fan of Jimmy Butler for quite some time now. And this dude just continues to pour it on during this series and show people that he is here to win. You saw him on the bench. He mouthed it. He said these boys can play on his team. And he, I, you know, <laughs> this, this, there's no doubt about it. And at 8,600, I don't love the price tag, but, you know, they're going to put the nail in the coffin. Um, I, I don't mind looking at Bam. I don't mind looking at Dragic. All three of these guys, I think, are excellent plays. They're all priced up at this point. So it's really going to depend on builds. Uh, you know, Bam, a fantastic play. If you're not playing Lopez at center, you can easily get some Bam action and feel good about it. You know, I didn't love him in this series, but he's proven me wrong. At least 45 DK points now in two out of three games. So no issues looking at him. And then Dragic, a little bit of a down one, but I'm willing to throw that one out the window. He would have 20-plus points if, this, if he got to the free throw line, but he didn't even have a trip there. A uh, little little unlikely to happen that he doesn't take a trip to the free throw line at least a few times over two games. So you're probably looking at closer to a 38 to 40 DK point night from Dragic if he keeps performing the way he is. And there's no reason for him not to. He's just been taking advantage of the matchup. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm all for it. And the Jay Crowder, a little bit of a price bump. Uh, but you know what? Yeah, we talked about it with Branton on the last show is, you know, and the Heat have no reason to switch up their lineup. Um, he's been smashed on 30 out in two out of the three-point games. Uh Two out of three games, 32 DK points, that is. At 5,600, it's not the best value. It's a solid value. It's someone that you can look to, and power forward isn't that deep. So, I, you know, I tend to land on him more often than not, and I'm sure a lot of other people do. And if you get Linux out, that just uh, pretty much secures him in there, lock and load for, you know, his minutes being 30-plus again. So uh, those are the guys I have some main interest in. You'll probably land on Tyler Hero there and there at 5,300. He's a rock-solid play. I prefer him over... Uh, Eric Gordon more nights than not just because of the little bit of uh, cheaper salary and just the ownership. Uh, a lot more people go to, you know, Eric Gordon. So if you're looking at cash games, Gordon's probably the better option, but hero makes a little bit of sense in tournaments, not playing Iguodala at 3,500. Uh, just don't trust the minutes. Don't trust the usage. There's not a lot of upside in that. And if you want to look at Duncan Robinson at 45, I don't mind that. You know, the price is finally coming down to where we could, uh, you know, really look at it when he was in that 5K range and everything like that. We know we can't trust him with his minutes necessarily. They're in that high 20s and low 30s. Very limited upside outside of the scoring column and hitting three-pointers. Uh, but on DK, you do get that three-point bonus. So I'll keep him in my player pool for that reason. Probably won't end up on him all that often. Uh, I'm mostly looking at the top four guys here. And I think that those four guys, you know, looking at one or two of those guys in most lineups feels like you have to. they got to close this series out. You know, they're going to be playing aggressive. Uh, 3-0. Jimmy Butler's got momentum. The team has momentum. I really like them closing this out. 4-0 and uh, the Bucks, And then we get to look forward to the Giannis sweepstakes, you know, with all the rumors spiraling around. Pretty excited to see who it actually ends up turning with that, you know, whether it's Golden State, uh, you know, there's a lot of places rumored. Miami's being rumored. I would love to see him on my, on my Dallas Mavericks. You know, him, him, uh, a little bit of him. Porzingis, Giannis. A lot to surround them with. Uh, might might be a pretty fun team to watch, but one can only dream. We'll keep moving though. Uh, last game of the night. Uh, it's 224 game total, five and a half points for Lakers versus Houston. Lakers are being favored in this one. Uh, Houston started off well. Nice little 1 0 lead, uh, lead for them. And, you know, we've kind of seen that small ball lineup just pester. Uh, Anthony Davis could he even hit a bucket on P.J. Tucker. LeBron didn't really come out and do LeBron things. Now, can we expect the same type of thing? No. Uh, I'm expecting a few things to change. I mean, there was already rumblings coming out that, you know, as reluctant as Davis is to play center, he is willing to do it going forward, he said. Um, you know, they have to kind of adapt slightly to that small ball lineup. 
And Davis said he's, he's fully on board with playing center. And I, was, I don't expect him to play all, all of his, the entirety of his minutes at center. Uh, but you, I could probably expect, you know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes at center, maybe. Maybe I would say, I'd say 15 is probably the safe thing. He'll like 15 minutes at center uh, in this next game. And, you know, to me, uh, that's going to change things. So I'll start off with this Laker side of the ball. Uh, I'm fully invested in LeBron James and Anthony Davis once again. I tend to land on Davis a little bit more just because, like I said, I hate that power forward position. And he's fully capable of taking advantage of this matchup, especially if he's going to be playing. I mean, power forward and center position, yeah, obviously he could take advantage of both. But there should be a lot more rebounds available if he's playing a little bit closer to the basket. So I don't mind looking at Anthony Davis at 10-6. I probably prefer him over LeBron, but it's splitting hairs. Both these guys are excellent plays. The next is in lineups that I don't want to play Anthony Davis at power forward, and you could easily play both these guys in the same lineup with each other, is going to be Kuzma. Because if Davis is saying he's going to be you know, sacrificing and playing a little bit more with center, that means we should see a little bit more Kyle Kuzma at the four. So I have no issues looking at him at 4,800. He's getting a little bit of a price decrease in from that last game. All three of these guys are very much in play. I've played Danny Green in that last one for a little bit of value. He didn't crush me. He didn't you know, give me what I was looking for. But he's somebody that's going to have to play minutes in this series. He's going to have to. It, it, you know, They need somebody to guard uh, James Harden out there on the perimeter. Uh, he should be three-point kind of series with the up pace, up tempo, knowing that they're going to be chucking. So a guy that I don't mind looking at. I'm not playing uh, Caruso. I'm not playing Caldwell Pope. I'm not playing McGee. Um, you know, we talked about it, and Rondo kind of did exactly what I expected. He came out and played 25 minutes at next to min salary. I don't know if we can anticipate that, but he, he was terrible. He looked absolutely terrible. He was dreadful out there on the court. He turned the ball over four times, so they're better without him. But for some reason, they keep playing this dude minutes. And if you need a dumpster dive play, he's probably my favorite of the bunch at some of that's like 3,300 or less, I guess, so. Uh, I think we probably got a better game out of that last one. You're probably looking at 16, but you know he has a little upside where he can get you 20 to 25 points, even in you know 20 to 25 minutes. So uh, that is probably all that I am looking at on the Lakers. So deep breath here. I just kind of said a mouthful. Uh, just to recap, you know Davis and LeBron firmly in play. You know I I'll probably mix and match these guys. You know as I started talking through it, Davis. You know main reason I love him so much. It's a better matchup, but. Uh, for him than it is LeBron, but just that power forward eligibility. But knowing that if he's going to be playing a little bit more center, it puts Kuzma more into play. We have a couple power forward options where I'll be mixing a match with these guys. I see myself having 50% ownership on both of them, and then I'll have a ton of Kuzma. Uh, Danny Green, when I need to make it work, sure, why not? And then I'll be looking at a little bit of Rondo here and there when I need a dumpster dive for some value, and that is it. Slide over to Houston side of things. I was all over Westbrook in that last one. I didn't get the game I was really hoping for. But, you know, 32 minutes. He played 34 in that last one against OKC. He looks like he's comfortable playing that much. He only hit one of five threes. He's struggling with the shot. But I'm going back to the well at 8,500. He's the guy from Houston I want exposure to. Uh, point guards versus the Lakers have just been absolutely annihilating, and Rondo being back is not going to help things. Rondo used to be a, prefer, a premier defender in his prime when he was in, in Boston, but uh, he is statistically and just visually absolutely terrible at this point in his career. Um, so I have no problem attacking this point guard position with Westbrook at 8,400 or 8,500. That's still a little underpriced for me. Uh, I'm not playing Harden. Um, I'm not going to knock you if you want to. He's an excellent play. Don't get me wrong. It's James Harden. Um, but, I, you know, you got to take a stance. And I think this, at this point, uh, I'm not playing Giannis. I'm not playing Harden. I'll get my Lakers exposure for the price up, and I'm going to pair it with some Westbrook. That's kind of the way my builds are looking right now. Um, and I'm perfectly comfortable with them. I have no issues doing that. If Harden beats me, he beats me. I still anticipate Westbrook to have a fairly good game at his price tag. Uh, Covington at 6400 the defensive stats continue to be there. He just was not aggressive in that last one. And that's, you know, the worry with Westbrook coming back is that we see these two guys just funnel usage. He only took three shot attempts, still managed to put up almost 30 DK points. So I'm not going to take him out of my player pool because those four steals, dude's been just racking in steals over the past three games. He's uh, averaging four steals per game. So um, no problem there. And in those games, he's also got seven blocks in three games. So, uh, you know, the defensive numbers will continue there. That's what gives him that nice base floor. And if he knocks down a few shots, he's got that tournament upside that we're looking for. So I feel like he's safe in cash. He's got a little upside at GPP. So Covington will stay in my player pool. Uh, I kind of set my piece a little bit uh, on Gordon before, kind of when I was talking about uh, Tyler here. Uh, I don't mind Gordon. I think he makes a ton of sense in cash. If you want to play him in tournaments, 
I think the upside's a little bit limited to his price. Uh, you know, thirty to thirty-five feels like his his ceiling right there, and you know, feels like it's floor at this point too. So it just feels like a safer cash play. Where uh, you know, I, I prefer a guy like Tyler Hero over him in tournaments just for the lower uh, lower ownership. Yep, you know, the floor is a little lower. The ceiling's probably about equal. Maybe a little. Hero's got a decent ceiling, um, but probably about equal ceiling as well. But you know, give me that lower ownership and catch Gordon on a bad game, catch Hero on an up game. Uh, P.J. Tucker, 4,700, center eligible. You know, prefers just spending up on Brook Lopez. Don't mind him. He's a guy that I often just land on, and it rounds out my position. Uh, he's been doing well. They're going to need big minutes out of him in this series, especially against AD. And he, he kept AD in check in that last game. Now, I don't fully necess- necessarily think that's going to happen again, uh, but they're going to need him. And if he can stay out of foul trouble, he's going to have to play as many minutes as he could possibly handle. Uh, and then as far as these ancillary pieces, you know, your Jeff Greens and these sorts of guys, Jeff Green's starting to get back down to a price where he could stomach, you know, for a while he was still floating around that 5K range with Westbrook back. We couldn't, you know, we saw the minutes directly come straight from guys like Jeff Green and, and Daniel House where we couldn't rely on him. So, um, you know, as the price tag starts to dip back down to 44, I can see myself playing it. Um Am I gravitating towards him? Is he going to be one of my premium value plays? Probably not. And uh, same thing with Daniel House. I don't think I'll have too many shares of House. I prefer Jeff Green over him. And, you know, that's probably it. I mean, I'm really just looking at a couple of guys right here. And it's it's really Westbrook, uh, Covington, and a little bit of P.J. Tucker. Those are the main guys I am looking at uh, over here from Houston. I already mentioned some of the Lakers. Um, I'm looking to spread out my ownership uh, mostly between Miami, L.A., and Houston, and then I'll have one piece probably uh, in Milwaukee, whether it's Bledsoe or Lopez or Middleton. I'll probably be playing one of those guys, and that's it. And that's pretty much how my builds are going. So uh, we'll see if that's the way they pan out. As we said, recording this the night before, and you know things change, updates happen. I don't expect a whole lot of news to break where it's going to change my mind, but uh, we'll have to we'll have to wait and see. But that is all I have for you guys. So we just knocked this out relatively quickly. Only took about 15 minutes. I hope I didn't fly through things too quickly. If you guys have any questions or need any help or anything, whatever it is, maybe you just want to say hi. Uh, you can always find me on Twitter. You can find me at Micah Patria. That is M-I-K-E-A-P-O-T-R-I-A. Uh, try to stay on there as you know frequent as possible. Always checking the updates. So I, I'll see some messages come through. I'll see some some ads come through, and I'm, I'm happy to kind of lend an ear. Uh, or help anybody in any way that I could. And if, if you guys have a quick moment, if you can help me uh, and help everybody here over at Hoopball, give us a rate and review, subscribe. Uh, you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Podbean, iHeartRadio, uh, pretty much all over the place. And it means a lot to us. It allows us to kind of you know get some feedback from you guys, adjust, and uh, you know get better at what we do. And then we also see the positive things and allows other people to find us and, and grow this show because – uh, that's what we're trying to do. We're we're trying to just continue growing and uh, you know keep the lights on. So you know it means a lot to uh, our sponsors out there too. Uh, you know, so please do it. Thank you in advance. Uh, and that's all we have for you guys. So uh, we'll be back tomorrow. I will be on with Brent and we'll be running through that Sunday. Uh, we'll be on Sunday night. We'll be running through the Monday card, and we'll break that down for you guys. So uh, from everybody over here at Hoopball, thank you for listening. Good luck. Let's go out there and crush some GPPs. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.